brethren, we can be bold in our affirmation as such. Why? Because God has promised to be with us and help us. In Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 and 7, be careful for nothing. That is, don't be anxious. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Do we believe that? If we serve God loyally, we have these promises from God. Now in this life, we also have fellowship with some of the best people who walk on the face of this earth. One of the great benefits, one of the great blessings of serving God, of being Christian, is human fellowship with those of like precious faith. We don't use that term a lot, do we? That's an expression we heard years ago often. I don't hear it used much anymore. If you think of what those few words suggest, like Precious faith. See, this is this is the faith based upon the faith. It is the faith of the gospel. It is the system of God. It is salvation. It is having something in common with. It's the very basis of our fellowship. We are children of the same Father. And we're not just a hodgepodge collection of we are blood kin because each one who is baptized into Christ comes into contact with Christ's blood and we are blood brothers and blood sisters in Christ Jesus. There is no greater relationship on the face of the earth. Not the marriage relationship, not the family relationship with mothers and children and fathers and children or brothers and sisters in the physical realm. There is no relationship greater or stronger than the relationship we enjoy as children of God. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 25 and 26, that there should be no schism. That word simply means division. There should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all members therefore suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now look at the context. God uses language that's so easy to understand. He uses the human body to illustrate the spiritual body of the church. And we understand as Christians the fellowship that we have. And notice here how beautiful this is. The member should have the same care one for the other. What does that mean? It means that when one member is hurting or suffering, every member ought to be hurting or suffering with them. Brethren, it takes more than just casual contact on Sundays and Wednesdays to develop this kind of relationship with one another as Christians. Look at the early church. What were those brethren doing in Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 3, and Acts chapter 4? They were together on a regular basis. They knew one another intimately. They knew one another's lives. And I'm afraid today that we are so compact, we are so compartmentalized in our lives, we are so tied and so busy with things around us that we don't have this kind of relationship that Paul is describing here that we should have, what, that all members should have the same care one for another. If one is hurting, everybody ought to be hurting. When one rejoices, everybody ought to rejoice. Should never be too busy to cry with a brother or sister in Christ or to rejoice with a brother or sister in Christ. We should never be too proud to admit that we are crying and we need a shoulder to cry upon. And we should never, as Christians, not be able to rejoice with a brother or sister in Christ who is rejoicing. What a great relationship we have. you ever really thought about Philippians chapter 4 and verse 3? Listen to what Paul says. He said, I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also, and with my other fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. Wouldn't it have been grand to have been able to help Paul? 
Paul stands in a class that would have to be very small at best. With the work that he did, the hours of toil, the labors, all of the tribulation that he suffered, and yet he singles these out as fellow laborers working together in the kingdom. And these were not all. There are other passages. This is but one of many. But you see, these were loyal to God, laboring in the kingdom, enjoying the fellowship that we have with one another. We could talk about prayer tonight. I'm just going to say this in passing. Prayer is a privilege. Oh, what a blessing. We talk about James 5, 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. 1 Peter 3 and verse 12, the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous and his ears are open unto their prayers, but the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. When we are loyal to God, we appreciate, we understand the significance of that lifeline of prayer. And brethren, that's what it is, a lifeline. Doesn't matter what's happening on this earth. We have a Father who cares. We have a mediator, Jesus Christ, who understands because he was here. And not to be sacrilegious, but to use a term that we hear frequently, Jesus could say, been there, done that. Because he experienced temptation. He experienced tribulation. He experienced betrayal. He experienced denial. He experienced hunger. He experienced pain, suffering. And the list could go on. Oh, how wonderful. Loyalty to God will cause us to live a life of moral purity. We talk about purity, but let me let me rephrase that. Loyalty to God will cause us to live a life of moral purity with no We won't ever come along as Christians and say, boy, you know, I sure wish I could have gone out and got drunk. It's sure not fair that we can't go out and use recreational drugs like other people. No, none of that. In Colossians chapter 3, beginning with verse 5, Paul says, Mortify, put to death therefore your members which are upon the earth. And then he names quite a list here. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence or desire covetousness which is idolatry for which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience in the which ye also walked some time when ye lived in them but now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth lie not one to another seeing ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew circumcision or uncircumcision, barbarian or Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all 